We're voting on House Resolution 63. All those in favor, vote aye when the bell rings. Those opposed, vote no. Has every member voted? Does any member wish to change their vote? Now, on whether or not to expel Justin Pearson Mr. will Clark, be announced. Take the vote. Aye, 69, 26 nays. Having received the, con the concurrence of two thirds of the members to which the House is entitled in the Constitution of the State of Tennessee, House Resolution 63 is hereby adopted. Without objection, the motion reeks serious table. Pursuant to Article 2, Section 12 of the Constitution of the State of Tennessee, I hereby declare Representative Justin J. Pearson. Of the votes. It appears Justin Pearson, as you're just saying right there, has been expelled with 69 votes in favor to expel him. We needed 66 votes to announce a formal expulsion. He has now been expelled, joining Justin Jones, who had also been expelled. Uh, Gloria Johnson survived her seat with 65 votes, just one vote saving her seat. Folks, I have to tell you the optics there, as Gloria Johnson referenced herself, uh, perhaps the only white out of the three Congress members there and representatives that had been saved her seat. So there you see it. The Tennessee House voting to expel two of the three Democratic lawmakers for their objection to gun legislation two weeks ago. This is the culmination of that. This is a historic moment right now, as you see playing out state legislature there in Tennessee. What happened today, the expulsion of two representatives in the Tennessee State House, has only happened twice since the 1860s. The last expulsion in 2016 was for a lawmaker accused of sexual misconduct. This time it was for a violation of the rules of decorum. Gary Tuckman is inside the state capitol, just outside the House chamber, joins us now. So, uh, Gary, talk about what's uh, just happened. Anderson, as we speak, behind me there are about 150 very angry people, angry that two legislators have been expelled from the House of Representatives. Right here, I'm standing in between Tennessee state troopers right here, the people back here, the reason they are standing here is because the legislators are coming out of the door now of the legislative chamber, and they're trying to control any possibility of violence. But so far, everything's been peaceful. I don't know if you can see there are people playing dead, lying down right here, with signs like the people are watching you, and fighting fascism is a moral obligation. But these people are very angry. All day long, there have been hundreds of people outside and inside the legislature building, the Capitol, and there have been about 250 people inside who are now leaving and coming out here. But basically, in a nutshell, and that right there is one of the legislators is coming out right now. But that, in a nutshell, this is a political story. And here's the man who was just expelled. This is Justin Pearson. I don't know if you can see him, but Justin Pearson is now walking out to talk to the people here. Let me see if I can get a word from him. Representative Pearson, Representative Pearson, how do you feel, what, sir? How do you feel? How do you feel right now, sir? But he's not talking right now. That's there if we can get a word. How do you, Mr. Representative, how do you feel right now? How do you feel right now, sir? All right, it's pretty chaotic, as you can see. I'm going to get back towards our camera. It's a chaotic scene, but to put this in a non-political nutshell, these people have been expelled from the House of Representatives because they talked out of turn last week, seven days ago. They walked out of turn. They're not allowed to walk into the well of the House of Representatives without permission from the Speaker of the House. They did that to protest this, and they also talked out of turn, and one week later, they're expelled. Listen to what people are saying. No justice, no peace. Take a look. So two representatives expelled. The other one, Gloria Johnson, survived by one vote. Gloria Johnson, who is white, and Justin Jones, who is black, both have said on the record they believe it is something to do with skin color. We don't know the answer to that. But two of the three legislators expelled are no longer representatives. They were elected by tens of thousands of people in their districts, but they've now been expelled from the House of Representatives by Tennessee state legislators. Anderson, back to you.
<laughs> and Gary, what, what are their options now? The two legislators who have been expelled, will they run again? So here's something very interesting, Anderson. You're going to talk to Dustin Jones shortly. He'll tell you if he's going to run again. But what's really interesting about Tennessee law, if he decides to run again and he wins again, he can't be charged on these same counts again. That's what's interesting. It's double jeopardy. If the earth constituents decide to elect you again, you can't be expelled again on this charge. However, they could find other charges to expel him. So that doesn't mean he wouldn't be expelled again. He just can't be expelled on this charge of disorderly behavior. That's what the Republicans are saying. He committed disorderly behavior. These people just said they wanted to get their words across about the gun issue, and they weren't being allowed to talk. And that's why they walked into the well. That's why they talked, in order to get their words out that the constituents wanted them to say. That's what they say, and they weren't being permitted to do so. But what's remarkable about the Sanderson, it was only one week ago when other people here were expelled from this legislature. We know of only three cases since 1866. It was because of crimes or issues of great, of bad morality. There's never been an issue where it's breaking a rule. And I've covered a lot of state legislatures in my career, 40 years. People break rules all the time. They don't get expelled. This is very unusual. The Republicans we've talked about said it's necessary because it disrupted the House of Representatives here. But that being said, it is most unusual. Right, Gary Tuckman, uh, we're going to come back with you. We're going to continue to uh, follow this, continue with those. Uh, we're going to reposition our camera. President Biden is following this story. Quoting now from his tweet a short time ago, quote, three kids and three officials gunned down in yet another mass shooting. And what are GOP officials focused on? Punishing lawmakers who joined thousands of peaceful protesters calling for action. The president adding, it is sh it's shocking, undemocratic, and without precedent. Now, shortly, we're going to talk to Justin Jones, who is one of the representatives who was expelled uh, just a few hours ago. The representative who was just uh, expelled, uh, as Gary Tuckman was talking about, and was just leaving the House floor. That's Justin Pearson. Gloria Johnson, as you know, a, a third representative who also took part in this protest last week. Uh, she survived uh, the vote to expel her by one vote. Uh, let's see if we can hear some of what Justin Pearson is saying. and they're treating things like this as normal. We can never normalize the ending of democracy. We can never normalize the, the tyranny of the way that these people in positions of power are operating due to white supremacy and due to the maintenance of patriarchy. That's what we're up against. But we are going to fight it because we believe that there is a future that we can live into that is better than the present that we currently have. Any other questions? Anything else you would like to say, sir? We're going to keep fighting. So again, that's Justin Pearson, uh, who has now been expelled. And again, this is from a protest that took place last week. These three members uh, stood up, went, approached the well to speak. Uh, they didn't have permission to speak. They used bullhorns uh, to try to get their point across. They were speaking uh, in the wake of the, uh, the mass murder of, of nine people uh, at, uh, at the school uh, in, in Nashville. Um, do we have Justin Jones? Okay, we're waiting to hear from Justin Jones. Um, Gloria Johnson, uh, as we said earlier, spoke to reporters after she survived her vote. Unclear why she survived her vote just by one vote, uh, where the other two uh, representatives did not. Uh, I'm also joined by The Atlantic's Ron Brownstein. Hey, Ron, talk a little bit about, put some of this in, in contest and perspective. Is this just about a violation of House decorum rules that took place last week. Clearly, they violated the rules. They used right. a bullhorn. If everybody did that, that would be chaos. But this is an unusual and an extreme oh. reaction to it. Yeah, look, I mean, it is unprecedented in Tennessee and possibly in the country to remove a legislator, to expel a legislator, to effectively erase the votes of their constituents uh, for this kind of infraction. I think, Anderson, you have to see this in the context of what has been happening across the red states on a wide range uh, of issues where you see Republican-controlled legislators and governors whose political power is rooted in their domination of non-urban, predominantly white areas, using that statewide power to override the decisions 
of diver racially diverse, blue leaning big cities and counties on a wide range of issues. I mean, you, you can look at what's happening in places like Texas, where they've taken the state has taken over the school district in Houston and may do so in Austin, in Florida, where Ron DeSantis has fired one elected Democratic uh, prosecutor and is moving against another places like Georgia and Missouri and Tennessee, where they where they've uh, mo taken over a preempted prosecutorial and policing powers of local governments uh, and taking that power to the state. And obviously what's happening in so many states on curriculum that effectively override the ability of, of localities to set their own rules on talking about race or gender or sexual orientation. It is a very consistent pattern across the red states where Republican coalitions rooted uh, in non-urban, predominantly white places are using their power in the most, and this may be the most dramatic and egregious example hey, to override the decisions of local government.